So let's talk about where are the opportunities for powertrain simulation engineers, right? So the powertrain simulation is a very important step for any of the companies who want to develop the powertrain or the vehicle itself. So let's start ahead with the OEMs that is called as original equipment manufacturer. It would be two wheeler or three wheeler or four wheeler or any vehicles globally are, are available at any place or any of the makers who make these things like maybe it's Bajaj, Hyundai or uh, Hero or Honda or anyone who basically makes the vehicles would require powertrain simulation engineers. So what is their roles and responsibilities when they hire for OEM? So if the OEM want to develop any new vehicle powertrain, right? So they want to bring uh, a sports car or they want to bring a scooter or they want to bring any micro mobility product, right? So now we define that application. So when we define that application, we define, okay, what is the, the, the top speed of this vehicle, right? What is the acceleration of this vehicle? What is the weight this vehicle can carry, right? So all these are the parameters that we try to define. Uh, if it's an, it's an EV, we also try to define what is the range this vehicle can achieve, right? So these are the parameters largely we're trying to define uh, to develop an electric vehicle. And if they have to give a requirement for the suppliers, so what is the requirement that they have to give it for suppliers? They have to tell that, okay, this is the motor size. When they define the motor size, they have to define in very detailed that, okay, this is my operating points of the motor, uh, which I'm expecting for. And maybe this is the power of the motor. This is the nominal torque. This is the peak torque of the motor. They have to define the motor max RPM, motor nominal operating RPMs. And also they want to define about what is the efficiency that they're trying to expect for the motor and what is the, the time the motor is going to operate over a specific drive cycles or a loading conditions. So all of this they have to define, right? So if you go on the battery side, they have to define about the size of the battery that is in the kilowatt and also the maximum discharge this battery can do uh, and uh, the charging series that they're trying to expect and then maybe about the thermal conditions that this battery is going to be exposed for and what is its duty cycles again, how long the battery will be operated in the peak conditions and what is its continuous uh, operating conditions and what is what they are trying to expect in terms of its life cycles or uh, the charging and discharging, the patterns. So all of this they have to define to a supplier, right? So without this, the supplier will not be able to come up with the optimal solution, maybe to select the right battery, to define the cooling conditions or define the specific dimensions of the battery and to plan about its uh, the warranty conditions or any of those kind of things, right? So you will not be able to do it. So as an OEM, so the, the engineers are required uh, who develop these models for them and who study the model uh, with respect to the influence of its various different uh, operating conditions and know with all these possible worst case scenarios, right? what will be the requirement of these components that I need in my vehicle. So that's the responsibility for OEM to keep. So the OEM requires these simulation engineers to ensure that what they want is clearly defined, right? That is why they, they need simulation engineers. Now, if you go to a tire one supplier like Bosch, Continental, Delphi, Denso, Hitachi, or maybe companies like AVL, Ricardo, who develops the powertrain for these OEMs, Right? So they will need more engineers to extensively work on designing those uh, uh, sizes of these components. So you want to study the influence of HVAC system, right? as we spoke in the previous video, that how does exactly it influences the energy consumption. Right? So how does my, the battery uh, cooling would influence my energy consumption of the battery? Or how does my battery heating will require? Right? And if you want to distribute all of these loads to the battery, maybe the motor required this much of power, the HVAC system requires this much of power, the battery cooling requires this much of power, maybe the power electronic systems require this much of cooling. So you need to include all the inefficiencies of the systems in place, how much it would be the losses in, in the whole system. So if you want to study all of these influences and then derive to develop a very optimal powertrain, and that is the engineering that typically happens at a tire one suppliers like Bosch or Conti, right? So they need the engineers to ensure that uh, they have a proper hands-on experience to develop these simulation models. That's where you require engineers uh, in terms of power and simulation. Now let's go to our engineering services. So where the companies like uh, TCS or HCL or Infosys or, or Genpak or Siant or somebody like that. So they also need simulation engineers because in most of the conditions, they may just get the small 
part of the project. They may not get a whole design as an overall the complete development, but they may only get a part of the project just to perform simulations and then uh, give the reports to the tire one or give the reports to OEM so that the, they can develop those products in place. Right? So we spoke about OEMs like who, who make the vehicles. Uh, we spoke about tire one suppliers like Bosch or Conti who provides the support to develop these systems to OEs or about engineering service companies who only provide the part of the services to either an OE or to a tire one supplier. So that's where you largely find the simulation opportunities. Apart from the simulation as well, so you would find some opportunities such as calibration engineer or you can find opportunities as a testing and validation engineer or you could find the, the road level uh, integration approaches or you, the opportunities such as the integration of the powertrain with respect to various different components. So these are the opportunities that you would find. So the first to start with, you find opportunities largely to build the simulation models or you would find opportunities to, to test this powertrain or you would find opportunities in integration of the powertrain and that is where you largely find any of the opportunities yourself if you, if you become the a powertrain engineer or if you learn the courses at decibels which will help you to gain the skills to become the engineer that you want to be uh, in the powertrain industry of electric vehicles. Thank you.